In our previous video, we implemented a CRUD repository and a simple save operation. In this video, we're going to look at some more advanced operations with CRUD repository, like a fetch operation. We'll find this is incredibly easy once we have the framework set up. Just a level set on where we are, in a previous video we created this interface called Specimen Repository, and it extends from CRUD repository. A few things to note. First of all, when we think interface, we tend to think of a list of methods, and you see that there are no methods in here. However, note that it extends another interface, and an interface can extend another interface, and when that happens, the subinterface is simply a sum of all of the methods of itself and its super interfaces. So there might be some magic here in this CRUD repository that we can use. And sure enough, when we look at the documentation, we see that CRUD repository has a whole series of methods that are useful to us. The CRUD methods. So we have count, delete, delete all, delete by ID, exist by ID, find all, find all by ID, find by ID, save, save all, so on and so forth. The typical CRUD operations. What's interesting is if you look at these methods, you see find all returns an iterable of type t. Now what's an iterable? It's something that we can loop over. But the type t is more interesting. Just make a note of that one. Find all by id returns type t and accepts an iterable of ids. If we scroll up and look at save, we'll see that save accepts an s and s extends from t. So let's put those together and let's just assume that s and t are one and the same. What I'm getting at here is that the T and the ID, if we take a look at the interface definition, we see that T and ID are the two generic markers we have on this interface. If we look at our implementation, we see that T is specimen, which is our DTO that represents specimens, and ID is integer. And if we take a look at the specimen class, we'll see that the unique identifying field is indeed an integer. So that's how we're able to reuse a bit of this magic. Now, let's look at our DAO, and in our previous video, we filled out the save method, and we left open the fetch all, fetch and delete method, but guess what? Now we know what we need to implement these. We'll start with fetch all. We already have our specimen repository, which we've auto-wired here, so let's say specimen repository dot find all, and you see, just like the method that we're inside, because we're returning everything, we don't need to take any parameter. We simply need to delegate the call down to the repository. Now, I can, ret I can try a return here, but I have a hunch it's not going to like it very much because the return type that I've specified here is list, and this is returning an iterable. One option is to change this return type from list to iterable. But the trick is that the DAO that we're in right now gets called from the service, and the service is returning a list, and the service is getting called by the controller, and the controller is returning a list. Not to mention we have interfaces in between. So doable, but it'd be a bit of work. Unfortunately, the other option isn't much better, and that is we can simply iterate over these. So refactor a little bit here. I'll put my cursor on find all, control alt v. And we will say, we'll just say specimens. And now for each. Now we're an iterable means we can iterate over something. And you see I've put a for loop here so we can iterate over these specimens. What I need to do is add them to a list that I can return. And there we have it. So you see we're creating an empty list. We get our iteration of all the specimens, we iterate over those specimens, and we add them to the list, and then we return the list. This is acceptable for a small collection, but if this were a large collection, I probably wouldn't copy from one to the other like so. I'd probably go ahead and change those method signatures, but nonetheless, fielder's choice in this case. The other methods we have, I believe, are going to be a bit easier. Fetch, for instance. For this one, very similar. We're going to say specimen repository dot find by ID. And for this, we're simply going to pass in that ID. One trick is just like above, find by ID returns a slightly incompatible type. It returns an optional, which is meant to protect against nullness. Inside of that optional, it may contain our specimen, and we can invoke a method called isPresent to determine if the specimen is there. Or we can simply invoke the get method, and that will return either the specimen or null. 
It would be smart to cascade this optional all the way back through our returns, but since I've already put the specimen in, we will assume that the methods calling us will be able to handle nullability. So I'll simply say return specimen repository find by ID get, and you see in one line we've taken care of our find by ID. Now just one more to go, and that's our delete. So come down here, similar concept. We're going to say specimen repository and delete. And notice that delete by ID accepts an integer, so we simply say ID. We pass the ID straight in, and you see now our DAO is complete. In a previous video, we made the specimen service stub, and we had a call on down here to the specimen DAO. As a matter of fact, this really isn't a stub anymore because it's doing some real work. So, and I don't see any hard coding in here anymore, so I'm ready to go ahead and promote this to a real class. So I'm going to refactor, rename, and we'll simply drop the step. One more change I'm going to make. In application properties, in our previous video, we said create, which means it would create the database table based on our DTO. I'm going to change this to validate, which means that it assumes that the table's already there, and it's simply going to validate that it is there. Now let's see what's in our database, and we will do a few experiments with Postman. So you see that the specimen table has three plants, two pawpaws, and a fireweed. We go back to Postman and we can hit our get endpoint. And let's see what we have in body. Oh, look at that. Sure enough, we have those three plants. Let's try a few more just for fun. Looks like we've got a duplicate pawpaw and one of them is ID number two. So why don't we try to delete the pawpaw with ID number two? Just like so, and that should match up our endpoint. Now let's go back and run that git again. And if we take a look at our git, have a look at that. We only have two plants now in the body. So you see that our delete endpoint confirmed that we were able to remove one of those two plants. Let's go back and take a look at the database one more time. And sure enough, you see that the delete endpoint by passing in that number two deleted that second plant. Let's do a fetch by ID. So specimen, remember, if we leave the endpoint without an ID, it returns all specimens. But if we specify an ID, like ID number three, we should get back one specimen, provided that the plant with ID number three, specimen ID number three in this case, does exist, which in this case it does exist. Finally, I want to take a look at this through the debugger, partially because I'm building on a project that I've been building for quite a long time and thus couldn't build the project from ground up in this video or it would be probably a five hour long video. But I can show it to you in the debugger. So I've set some breakpoints and I'm going to hit that same URL as before, the git where I'm specifying a specific ID, in this case ID number three. So I choose send. IntelliJ lights up orange. Now take a look at where we have landed here. We're in our plant diary controller and look at our git mapping. First of all, we see the word git. We go back to Postman and we know we're using a git request. Secondly, we see an endpoint slash specimen and then slash curly ID close curly. And what do we have on Postman? Slash specimen and then three is between those two slashes. So three is going to get populated into this ID parameter and via this path variable ID, it's actually going to be pu pushed into the parameter variable for this method. So what we do here is we go down from the controller, we call the service, the service calls the DAO, the DAO calls the CRUD repository, it all comes back to us and then it assembles this response. So let me set one more breakpoint because I'll likely be doing a lot of F7 here. So first of all, starting in the controller, I press F7 and that takes us to the specimen service. Specimen service gets the ID number three and it calls down to the specimen DAO. I press F7 here and we get into an interceptor, which is a little bit tricky. There's some things like aspect oriented programming you can do. Because of that, what I did is I set a breakpoint at the next stop that I want to see, which is the DAO. So remember, we're going from the service to the DAO. I choose F9 and we end up on our DAO and take a look. This is the line we just wrote. Specimen repository dot find by ID. And then we pass in the ID number three and then simply get that out. So let's go ahead and do an F9. The F9 is going to bubble us back up from the DAO back to the service class where I didn't have a breakpoint, so it skipped over that, and then all the way back to the controller where we started. And if you see here in the controller, what do we have under found specimen? 
Well, this looks kind of familiar. We have our plant of Greenland with specimen ID number three, just like the ID that was passed into us. We got a good response. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, well, I want to marshal this as JSON. So I'm going to say, let's make a JSON. And then I'm going to put the specimen in the application JSON in HTTP status OK, which corresponds with a 200. And I'm going to send that back to Postman. So I choose F9. We go back to Postman, and what do we see? We see status 200 OK. Uh, I, I do want to point one other thing out here. Look at this time. It's 2 minutes and 26 seconds. Normally, that would be microseconds. But you see, because I had the debugger running, that slowed down significantly. So you see that that is actually the call that we were just debugging through. And sure enough, what did we get back? We got a JSON representation of our specimen. And if we take a look at our headers, we see content type is application JSON, just as we specified right here in our controller. So what you've seen in this video is that we have implemented three different CRUD operations in addition to the save operation that we already had. We implemented the fetch all, the fetch, and the delete. So I hope this video has been helpful, and I look forward to reading your comments. Thank you.